Hello everyone, uh, my name is Michael, and I'd like to show you how to do two-step equations today. So you've done one-step equations in the past. One-step equations is just something simple, like let's say 12x equals 24. That's a one-step equation, you've done these, they've solved in one step. What I'd like to show you today is how to do a two-step equation, where you'll do, you have, where basically, you, it's like combining two one-step equations into one. But in order to do two-step equation, you need to know how to do a one-step equation. So the simplest thing, I'd like to do a very quick review in our very short lesson today. So this is in this one-step equation, like, it, like all one-step and two-step equations, your goal is to get x by itself. So you have 12x equals 24. Your tr the simplest way to get x by itself is to divide 12x by 12. Because this 12x is just 12 times x. You divide 12 by 12, so cancel out. When they cancel out, you're just left with x, which is exactly what you want. But when anything you do to one side of the equation, you have to do to the other side of the equation. So you can't just say 12x divided by 12 equals 24. You also have to divide 24 by 12. Otherwise, you're breaking the law of math. Things will explode. Your teacher, like things, will, you'll be very unhappy, and you'll get all the wrong answers on your test. Always do this. Trust me. Or you should, you should probably remember this from before. But make sure you do this. This is a simple mistake to make, and it does happen. But just to get it done, um, this is a single step equation, the 12s cancel out. You have x equals 24 over 12. 24 divided by 12 just equals 2. You get x equals 2. And that's just a single step equation. And another single step equation would be like x plus 1 equals 3, for example. And you, you've done these before, so you should hopefully have recalled your memory so we can get on to the two step equations. Now, the two step equations have an added element, basically, and that you have more than one option. More than one way you can try and that, you, that appears like you can try and solve it, which makes them a lot more confusing. Basically, let's say 12x plus one equals 13. This, I mean, should you do what you did like last time and just divide by 12? No, you shouldn't. But or should you try and maybe do subtract one from both sides? Like, how do you get x by itself? Which step do you do first? This is where inverse order of operations really starts to matter because if you if you take the wrong step. The question could get a lot harder involving fractions and decimal. It would be you do not want to make a, you do not you you want to make sure you follow inverse order of operations. Otherwise, things could go very bad for you. The question would get much much harder. So you know regular order operations like please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, which is parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, and everything that comes first. You just want to do first. Inverse order operations is just the opposite. Anything you do like. Anything you would do last, you do that beforehand. So normally you would do multiplication before you do addition or subtraction, right? In this case, you're doing the inverse order of operations. You do not divide by 12 first. Division and multiplication come after addition and subtraction. You want to subtract one from both sides first. If you do it the other way, this question really gets a lot harder to solve. So make sure so, yeah, that's addition, so inverse order of operations, do subtraction first. So, one minus one just becomes zero. Exactly what you want. You want this to cancel out. One minus one equals zero. Equals 13 minus one. Make sure, again, make sure to do something to both sides. Subtract one from here, subtract one from here. Very simple. You get 12x plus zero. So you don't actually need to write that. But if you want, you can write that down just to keep track. Plus zero equals 12. And now it's just a regular one-step equation again. 12x equals 12. You almost did that beforehand. You just divide both sides by 12. Almost out of first case, but just in time, because 12x over 12, as before, 12s cancel out. You get x equals 12 over 12. Same thing as before. Anything divided by itself equals 1. So you end up with x equals 1. And that's basically that's the trick to two-step equations. You have to make sure to do inverse order of operations. If you try to divide by 12 first, like this equation, you would have you would have fractions like 13 over 12. You would have this would be not only that, but you would have you would have this in particular would make it a lot more complex. So like you'll learn that later on when you start learning how to manipulate things algebraically. But make sure you follow inverse order operations. Because right if you don't if you don't do that like right now, you won't be able to the math will get too hard for you to do. But since you know inverse order operations, and since we still have a little bit of time left in this lesson, I'd like to actually like test it out. See if you guys have been paid, see if you guys can follow along. It's always much easier when you try it yourself to see if you can do it. So let's say make this a little bit trickier. X 
divided by, let's say, 3 plus 1 equals 5. So this is another two-step equation. Now, you want, like, again, you want to solve for x, but there's, it looks like there's two steps you can do. What am I supposed to do? Do I just put my head down on my desk, like cry to myself to sleep, like feel terrible, like don't know what to do? What, what, what should I be trying to do to solve this question? Should I subtract one? Should I multiply by three? Should I like just tear the paper up? What do you think, uh, Courtney? Uh, so you've been telling us to do reverse order of operation, right? Yes, inverse order of operations. Now, which operation normally comes first, addition, subtraction, or multiplication and division? Multiplication, division. Yes. So the exact opposite of that is what? If you're uh, using... Addition and subtraction. Yes. So you would want to do addition and subtraction first. So that's really the hardest part about two steps is remembering that. But so what? What do you add or subtract? How are you going to get x by itself? Uh, so you do the opposite, right? Yes. So you subtract one from both sides since it's adding one? Yes, that is absolutely correct. You have x over 3 plus 1 minus 1 equals 5 minus 1. 1 minus 1 equals 0. 5 minus 1 plus 0 equals 4. So you are correct. This is now just a single step equation. And I will read these. So ideally, you should remember because we just did them. But you've also done these in the past. So what would you do for this last step? x over 3 equals 4. How would you solve this? Multiply by 30. Yes. This is just a single step to solve this equation. You multiply both sides by 3. Again, remember, always multiply both sides by. Always do whatever you do on one side to the other side. So the 3's cancel out. x equals 4 times 3. 4 times 3 equals 12. And that is how you do two-step equations. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. In reverse! Sally, Aunt Dear My Excuse Please Please again. Excuse <laughs> my dear Aunt Sally. In reverse! Sally, Aunt Dear my